<laughs> Hello, everybody. I um, pray you can hear me. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Fallon DeShields. I'm a servant of the Most High God, Abba Father, Yahweh, servant of Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. Um, I've come today simply to help those who are looking for a way to better understand where they're at in life, to understand the struggle that is going on, um, not only in our flesh, but in our minds and in our spirits. Um, excuse my background. I actually um, have been meaning to do this video for months now, <laughs> but I kept having to um, shift it and push it and, you know, make different times and dates and all of that crazy stuff, basically just excuses. So today I am here and no excuses because people, you know, I've been running into a lot of people and people, they really just need a little bit of guidance. You know, they need to be led to the water so that they can get a good drink. So um, as you saw, the title of my video today is called The Ox and the Ass. And I came up with this title because a lot of people are struggling, trying to figure out where they belong in God, who they are in God, what are we supposed to be doing and things of that nature. Um, this is gonna be a quick video. I'm not gonna go too in depth today. I'm, it's gonna be more than um, this part. But um, today is just a quick introduction to help everybody to understand um, as we go about life making choices each day, we choose whether we want to be an ass or ox. Now, um, God is calling us from being <laughs> donkeys by nature. Um, if you'll turn with me to Matthew 16 and 24, give you time to get your Bibles. Even though I have my notes, I like to be in the word with people who I'm talking to. So Matthew 16 and 24, um, I use the King James Version. We'll turn to it and start from there. Alrighty. Um, it says, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Um, so if you love the Lord and you know that you want your life to be spirit led, the first decision is to make a decision of whether or not you're going to follow Christ. You know, not lead him, not lead the Holy Spirit where you're going, but allow him to lead you. Um, and in this scripture here, Jesus is saying, if you want to follow me, these are some of the things that I require of you. He begins to list a couple of things that is required of us to follow him. Now, work of men work all of our lives. You know, work was given to us back in the garden days. You know, a lot of people say it as... Um, a curse because it came up under the curse. But if you go back and read that scripture, you actually realize that working is a blessing. And, you know, some people are like, how is it a blessing? You know, it, it, it goes as far as to say um, one major thing. If you have nothing to do, um, you become lazy, you become, you know, out of shape, you become, you know, like just around. You can become depressed. You can become, you know, so the Lord gave us work as a blessing because we had fallen under the curse because of, you know, the old Adam. Um, being under the new Adam, when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we're under grace. So yes, we still have to work, but he gives us a freedom. Whereas though while we're working, it won't, you know, depress us or compress us or overtake us. You know, like there are people who are still walking in the donkey hood <laughs> and work is just burden to, burdensome to them daily. You know, they hate their job. They hate the people they work with. They hate waking up in the morning to go to work. It's just, you know, a bunch of hate, hate, hate. 
you know, those people have yet to realize, you know, and it, it happens. It, it happens. And they have yet to realize that they're under the curse of, you know, working like an ass. You're just working to be working. When we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and we receive his grace, work is not as burdensome as it's meant to be. Um, that comes from Matthew 11 and 29 and 30. So turn that with me. Again, that's Matthew 11, 29 and 30. I'll start at verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Jesus already knew that the task at hand was going to be burdensome. You know, that that the, even back in the older days before Jesus, there were, you know, taskmasters. And the Egyptians had the Hebrews as slaves. They were the asses to their, you know, their little kingdom. So um, he said, come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's his promise to us. It doesn't mean we get to stop working, but he says he will give us rest. He will change our mind, our point of view, the way we see things and help us to unburden ourselves. You know, we can let go of some of the weight that has been put on us. Um, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, not into our bodies, but into our souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, with that being said, um, once you really begin to grasp who Jesus is and grab his grace and really accept his grace, the burden becomes a lot lighter. When you really realize, okay, it's not that bad, you know, waking up in the morning and doing this because everything we do has a purpose. A lot of times when we do things just to be doing it or we do it just for the money, it's a burden because our goal is the money. Our goal is to make sure we keep a roof over our head, you know, versus understanding that it's so much more because God is a generational God. He's just not a one dimensional God who, you know, just um, wants to be a blessing to just us. It's about the legacy coming behind us. It's about fulfilling what has been done ahead of us and what God has promised. You know, it's so much more. And as you begin to learn of Jesus, and why he came to do what he did for us and your part in that, it it lightens the load that you're carrying. Um, we get to get pulled out of, you know, the donkeyism of just working and just being laborers and sometimes even kicking against the prick, you know. You know, your boss tell you, go to oh, this. He don't never want to do, you know, he telling me to do stuff he don't want to do. You know, like I'm tired of working this. I'm, that type of mentality will change and shift as you begin to understand, you know, that Jesus came to lighten our load and what it is he's doing in your life, particularly that will um, help you to elevate mentally, physically and spiritually. So that you can look beyond getting up and just going to work every day and seeing, you know what, I'm building a legacy. I'm showing my son, my daughter, you know, how to work and make an earnest living, how to, you know, when you begin to look beyond yourself, you know, that's what Jesus shows us. Look beyond yourself, get beyond selfishness, because really that's what the enemy does. He uses our blessings against us. So see, when we get up and we complain, we're telling God in essence you know, I thank you for, you know, giving me a roof over my head, but this is getting on my nerves, God. I can't stand this. And, da, 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 da. and God is like, okay, so you don't want the blessing? <laughs> that's what you're telling me? You're like, no, I want the blessing, but it's just getting on my nerves. You know, like, that's in essence what we're telling God. Um, but that's a trick of the enemy because he has burdened us down with the truth of what his blessing really is and how it's a blessing. We don't understand how it's always a blessing. Um and that's for different parts of our lives. It's not always work. Sometimes it's the children. Sometimes it's, you know, just the neighborhood you're in. Sometimes it's just a mental thing. You know, this applies to every area in your life. We have to decide to no longer be the ass and work just to be working and to think just to be thinking and to do stuff for just these people. You know, we have to go beyond ourselves 
and see the true purpose behind what we're doing, what God is calling us to do. And that will lighten our load once we connect into the yoke with Jesus. That's why he said, take his yoke upon us, because every area of our life, there's a yoke that he has for us and a yoke that we have. And when we choose his yoke, the burden is lightened. When we choose our yoke, the burden is heavy. <laughs> and our yoke usually goes, mm, I could work at McDonald's or I could take the job at the shoe store, which looks a little more prestigious and sounds better saying I work at a shoe store versus McDonald's flipping burgers. So. I'm going to take the shoe store. And God is like, no, I need you to flip the burgers. And we're like, I know, God, I know. But, you know, this opportunity sounds so much better. It looks so much better. And God is like, no, 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 no. I need you over here for a reason. And we're like, yeah, we know, God. But this, you know, and we take that job. And six months down the road, you know, things happen. And we're tired of that job. Now we're complaining. We're not making the money like we should do because we didn't realize it was based on sales and stuff like that. And, um. These are some of the areas, you know, that God is trying to um, get us to understand that he has a purpose. Sometimes we get stuck on our purpose, what we feel as though we need and what we want. And, you know, um, Jesus is saying, take my yoke, take what I want, take my understanding, take my way of thinking upon you. Let go of what you think. Let go of what you want. Let go of your desires, which is why he said back in Matthew 16, 24, you have to bear the cross to come after me. You know, it's a cost. It's a price to pay to follow me, but it will be worth it. <laughs> You'll find that it'll be worth it, not just for you, but for your whole family. So um, the ox, the ox is also a working creature, but um, let's look at the fact that the ox, first and foremost, has a place in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Ezekiel said he saw the four-faced angel and the ox was on that angel. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, the ox has a place, a position in the kingdom, not the ass. So let's choose to be the ox because the ox has the yoke of Jesus. You know, even um, the four faces that were in Ezekiel's vision, all four of them faces represented a facet of Jesus himself. He came to work. He came to, you know, um, bring the kingdom to us. He worked the whole time he was here. He was a giver the whole time he was here, meaning he worked from, you know, the time he started his ministry to the very end. He worked, you know, but the work that he did accomplish so much for the kingdom of God for us. You know, it was it was a it was a smash on the head to Satan, a victory for us. And obedience unto his father. I mean, you can't get much better than that. So the ox, though a workerman, is much more usable in the kingdom of God than an ass. An ass sort of has their own opinion. They, you know, they want to kick against the prick sometimes. You know, um, Jesus asked Saul, who became Paul, he said, Saul, Saul, why dost thou kick against the prick? You know, because he was just like, hell bent on all that he knew once the Lord blinded him and downloaded him with the the revelation of who he was and Paul well Saul who later became Paul realized his life was no longer his but his whole purpose was for the kingdom for Jesus Christ then he had meaning and purpose in his life and his burden became less Maybe not physically, you know, I mean, going from being a Roman soldier and having all this clout to being someone who's sometimes whipped and shipwrecked. And, you know, it seems like their life is a mess, but his burden was a lot less. He didn't have to worry about running around and killing people and, you know, holding up his own standard. You know, if you don't listen to Caesar, you'll die to, you know, well, Lord loves you. You know, and he just wants you to understand. He wants you to know that he loves you. Come listen to him. Sit at it. You know, his burden was lightened. And sometimes our point of view will cause us to um, carry a heavy burden. And so I'm praying today that this will help someone to um, lighten their load, you know, to understand, take upon yourself the yoke of Jesus. And tomorrow, I'll be able to get into a little more of how we do that. How do we take the yoke of Jesus and um, 
not walk in our own, you know, selfishness, our own ways, and how do we the transition? And I'm gonna give you a point right now. The major part of it is grace. When we step from law to grace, a major part of that is done. Resting in the finished work of Jesus is a major part of coming away from the ass and becoming the ox. And, you know, eventually God will remove the ox from us and we'll become what else he needs us to become. <laughs> so I pray this helped somebody. Um, oh, another scripture that I do want to give you is Isaiah 30 and 20. Before I leave, let us turn to my man, Isaiah. Again, that is Isaiah 30. And 20. Okay. It states here, I'm reading from the King James Version. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thy eyes shall see thy teachers. Um, this scripture is basically talking about how the Lord will allow us to see him moving in our lives. We will be able to see the Holy Spirit moving in our lives. Um, a lot of times being the ass, you do your own thing. You, you move according to your own will. Part of coming from um, being an ass to an ox is sitting at the feet of Jesus, being still and taking his yoke upon you and listening and learning of him. You see what I'm saying? And you'll be able to see him in your life more when you sit still and get quieted within your soul. But again, I'll hit on that a lot more later. Um, again, I hope these scriptures helped you. Go over them today when you get a chance. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Um, if you want to know any questions, please don't be afraid to um, send me the questions that you have or, you know, any comments, anything. Have a blessed day. God bless you. All righty.